Mizoram, the beautiful land of the Mizo tribes, is one of the seven sister states of Northeast India. It is a small but peaceful state of India, geographically sandwiched in between two bordering countries of India. The Southeast Asian countries of Bangladesh to the west and Myanmar to the east and south. A place marked by irregular hilly terrain, verdant forests, steep hills, swift flowing rivers, deep gorges, pleasant climate and often swayed in mist. As for the Mizos, they are a disciplined, hardworking, hospitable and spiritual peoples. Not so well known to the rest of the world, this Christian-dominated state of India is sparsely populated. Yet, amazingly, Mizoram is home to the world's largest family. Not often do we hear of the practice of polygamy being promoted in Indian society. But in Tlangnom Baktong village of Sirchip district, Mizoram, it is a different story altogether. Forget the idea of a man getting married to more than one woman. Here, a man marrying even a dozen women is not a big deal. An hour's drive away from Aizol, the capital city of Mizoram, is Tlang Nwambakdong village which houses about 300 families and 2,000 followers of the Christian denomination known as the Lalram Kangpui Zautu. Under this sect, a man is allowed to have more than one wife or solemnize plural marriages on the basis of mutual consent understanding, respect for each other, and most of all, love. The principle of Lalram Kangpui Zautu bears a similarity with the Mormon fundamentalism or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Both the doctrines are associated with advocacy of polygamy. However, the principle no longer holds to mainstream Mormon followers today. The term Lalram Kampui Zautu in the local Mizo dialect means the followers of God and their place of worship is called Namtlan Runpui. The head of this Christian sect is Zayana, a 69-year-old practicing polygamist surrounded by a gaggle of women round the clock. Not only is he the leader of the church, but also the head of the world's largest family. According to sources and family members, Zayana has 39 wives, 86 children, 14 daughters-in-law and 34 grandchildren, all living under one roof in a huge mansion which they lovingly call Chuantarun, meaning House of the New Generation. Altogether, the 174 members of the Zayana family live in Chwantharun, or in short, CTR as it is called in a rather military-like fashion. If we were to add the grandchildren from the side of his daughters who do not stay in Chwantharun, the number of Zayana's grandchildren climbs to 121. So, Zayana's big happy family gets counted in a whopping 209 members. The original founder of Lalram Kangpui Zautu, however, is Chalian Chana, Zayana's father. During his time, he married seven women and had 29 children, 15 daughters and 14 sons. After Chalian Chana's death, Zayana, being the eldest of them, took the responsibility of the church and carried on with the principles of Lalram Kangpui Zautu. 
He is respected, loved, and dearly called Kapa, which means my father, by all in the village. Chuantha Run is a huge four floor building with 22 rooms. Once you step into the house, the kitchen to the left and a large spacious drawing cum dining room awaits you on the second level. While the married sons sleep in separate compartments attached together on the third floor, there is a dormitory exclusively for Zionas all their wives. Zayana has his own plush and lavishly decorated room on the second floor. The younger wives sleep in a dormitory right next to Zayana, while the older wives sleep farther away. The wives take turns to visit him when they are summoned. Given the massive number of family members, it is amazing how the entire family survives as one unit. Zayana is literally the owner of the whole nine yards. He owns Klangnuam Baktong Village, Chuantar Stadium, Chuantar Primary School, Chuantar High School, poultry farms, piggeries and vegetable gardens. But the bulk of his income comes from his profitable furniture business. For at the end of the day, Zayana is a carpenter. His public relations officer Lalrin Thanga says that Zayana is not like any other human being. He is God gifted, an architect, and can even heal people when they are sick. He is very generous and has an amazing memory. For instance, he remembers all the names of his family members and even calls villagers, whether old or young, by name. Gawala ko jana ne sab dek bal karta hai. Luka o khana pina o jama karne ke liye bhi jana ne sab scheme karke. Bossi luka bahut pyar karta hai, dek bal bahut karta hai. Alak atmi hai wo ta. भगवान का बहुत प्रार्थना करता है ना भगवान अभी पियर करता है भगवान कभी पियर करता है जायना प्लान्स एवरीथिंग वेल इन एडवांस हिज फैमिली एंड द विलेजर्स एग्जीक्यूट हिज प्लान्स अकॉर्डिंगली ही हैज मेड एन इंप्रेशन अपॉन द पीपल टू सच एन एक्सटेंट दैट ही इज कंसीडर्ड द किंग एंड द लीडर ऑफ हिज पीपल he is the religious head of the village and sets an example for his people. A case in point is the Chuantar Stadium that he built. It took 15 years to complete with the use of manual labor, working under his supervision without the slightest external help or governmental assistance. Call it social work for the welfare of the villagers or a strategic political move, Zayana has been involved with building and expanding the village roads. Accompanying him are the villagers who take out their time every morning for at least two hours each to help him on this project. Zayana, his sons and grandsons arrive by a truck at the site while the ladies prefer walking towards the project. The women folk do their bit to contribute to the village regardless of their age. The men fix pipelines, break rocks and level the road. He does not just build roads or stadium. Zayana has even built water tanks sculpted from rock so as to preserve underground water reserves for use by his people in times of need. It would appear that the phrase work is worship stands true for this village. Everyone is involved in at least one larger social endeavor or project.
The furniture business in Mizoram state is a booming industry that feeds the appetite of the entire northeastern region of India. This works well for Zayana's family, whose livelihood mainly depends on the production of furniture. Like him, most of his sons are gifted and self-trained professional carpenters. Almost the entire day is spent working at their furniture workshop, well equipped with both manual traditional tools as well as modern machines to save them time and meet the ever-growing demands of the clients. The family has three major furniture workshops and whatever profits they yield are handed over to Zayana. They readily share their hard-earned money with the head of the family as it is for the joint maintenance and benefit of the family as a whole. The furniture products are supplied to nearby towns, the main market being Isol itself. Meanwhile, the women folk of Zaina's family are occupied with rearing pigs, which are the source of a major portion of the family's earnings. Klangnuam Baktong village and Mizoram as a whole is a mountainous region, hence farming is not easy on the steep slopes. However, pig farming plays an important role in the livelihoods of small farmers. Besides, Pigri is the best source of meat production as opposed to the various other livestock species. The family even utilizes the fecal remains as a natural fertilizer for the vegetable farms. It is not an easy task rearing pigs in the family's pigri, but Zayana's wives and daughters-in-law are not new to it and they know exactly what to do. Their work involves cooking, feeding, cleaning, bathing, and even inoculating the pigs. Everything is prepared and planned in advance, including collecting fresh green fodder, chopping it, and preparing food mixes for the pigs. Besides the piggery farm, the women also look after the family's poultry farm. Zayana's family eats the vegetables that they grow. They have to be self-sufficient owing to the family's size. The plantations include spinach, cabbage, mustard, chili and broccoli using natural and pig-based manure. It is the responsibility of the wives to look after the garden. The children also do their bit by carrying waters from the tanks climbing up the steep garden steps and watering the plants each morning. The routine process of preparing food for the family when seen by outsiders creates the impression that either a celebration is underway or a feast is being planned. However, this is the normal routine in the Zayana household. The women have to wake up before everyone else does and they start by collecting wood for and then lighting the kitchen fires. Their breakfast consists of only a cup of tea or two and through the day snacking consists of raw tobacco products. The family normally consumes 50 kilograms of rice for lunch and 40 kilograms for dinner altogether using 90 kilograms per day. The family barely eats any meat as owing to the sheer quantity required as it takes a long time to prepare. They consume whatever seasonal greens are available in their vegetable garden. Their cooking style is as simple as boiling vegetables and adding a hint of garlic, ginger and salt. The family does not go shopping for food and commodities. What they do is simply order whatever is required and their order is delivered to their doorstep by a delivery truck. The women cook food in unison, helping each other. Even the kids lend a helping hand to their mothers and grannies. 
Everyone seems to get along well as they smile and chat among themselves. It is the kids who gets to eat first on the dining floor. After they are done, the elders move and dine together. Once everyone has left the dining room, the ladies clean up the table swiftly, do the dishes, mop the floor and return everything back to normal. It goes without saying that Zayana is a cleanliness freak. The family and everyone in the village loves to balance their work and play. It has nearly been a month since schools have closed down for winter vacations. Apart from the official school holidays, everyone is in a playful mood as the winter football tournament is going on. All the projects and ongoing works in the village is put on hold in the afternoons. All the shops in the village shut down and everyone gathers at the Juanta Stadium to watch the family members play their favorite game, football. The teams include all ages of men and women. A rear view of Zayana's house, Chuanta Run, can be seen from the Chuanta Stadium. Even Zayana himself is an avid football fan. He sits at the podium flanked by village elders and his sons. In the meantime, while everyone is having a good time at the stadium, the wives of Zayana are preparing food for the evening meal. After all, some folks have to stay back and do what is necessary for the family to run smoothly. Palyana, aged 50. He is the eldest son of Zayana and has his own small family unit within Juantarun. He married twice and has 15 children. Out of his five sons, two are married and have kids. So that makes him a grandfather and in turn Zayana a great grandfather. Palyana manages the family's business but insists that Zayana is the man behind the whole family. Besides Zayana, Palyana is the only one who enjoys the pleasure of having his own apartment in Juantarun. For instance, his son Mingtan Zauva is a 24-year-old married young man. He has studied till the 10th standard and helps his father and grandfather in the furniture business. He says he won't marry twice unlike his father Palyana or grandfather Zayana because he loves his wife very much. He loves his grandmothers equally and has no favorites. Then there is Namlun Thara. A 22-year-old educated son of Zayana who is two years younger than to his nephew Hengtan Zova. He finished his MBA course in the summer of 2011 through distance learning. However, he has decided to help his father and family by teaching at the local school. Hamhun Tara, unlike his brother, is not a gifted craftsman or carpenter. When asked whether his father had plans to visit America and marry an American woman, Hamhun Tara said his father would never say or do such a thing, as he is a very reserved and is a religious and holy man. Another example of age difference in the family is Ramdeng Zela and Chuanjo Zwala. Despite being related as uncle and nephew, they are of the same age, share the same sense of innocence, and these two kids share a special bond between them as well. Ramdeng Zela is Palyana's youngest son, whereas Chuanjo Zwala is Palyana's grandson.
With dinner time over, the children of the house gather together and draw the chairs in line in the sitting room. It is probably their favorite time of day. They meet up here, sing a particular song dedicated to the head of the Zayana family and dance to its tune. While we are not able to understand the exact words of the song, it does prove that Zayana is embedded at the very core of their young hearts. Once the fun is over, everyone, whether young or old, gets back to their rooms, dormitories, or cabins for a good night's sleep. Gathering the family together to take a group photograph is a difficult task because they are scattered across the town as they take charge of their given duties and responsibilities. This morning, we wait for the entire family to turn up for the photo shoot. And just as we planned, after the morning church sessions gets over, the members of the world's largest family appear one by one. In less than a few minutes, Zayana and his family are ready to save cheese to the camera. And once you see the whole family together, one just wonders how Zayana manages to keep his entire family as one unit. After all, the followers of Lalram Kangpui Zautu believes that one day Zayana will rule the earth besides Jesus Christ. Deep criticism from the other mainstream Christian organizations and banishment from his old village does not deter him. Zayana sticks to his guns and continues with expanding his family like King Solomon. He is ever ready to get married yet again and further expand his family and his sect. His life is coincidentally similar to a fictional American TV drama called Big Love that aired on HBO. The show revolved around a family's struggle to live their polygamous lifestyle without making it known to the outside world. However, Zayana beats it all in reality. He does not shy away from the media and balances his life with so great a line. <laughs>